Hi everybody, this is Tara, and uh, welcome to Saturday Morning with Handmade by Tara. Um, sorry for the little delay, and normally I start at 11 o'clock, but I was running into issues with my new webcam, so I was trying to, for some reason it wasn't picking it up on my computer. But let me put in the comments, let's see, so you can see me. So how is everybody doing this morning? Today what I'm planning on doing is giving a little bit of information about what I've been up to and then show you a couple products that I have and then I'll start working on the scarf again and hopefully finish it off today. Fingers crossed. So first of all again I'm Tara with Handmade by Tara and Lately, I have been trying to come up with creative ways since we're not doing craft shows anymore. So, as you know, I've been doing these lives, and uh, people seem to enjoy them, so I'm going to keep doing them. And I'm having fun doing it, too, because I really miss seeing people. Um, I've also updated my e-booth, which is myebooth.com. I put the, uh, the link to the address in the, in the comments here so you can take a look at it. Finish the, that's pretty much everything I have that I would sell at a show. There's a couple of little things I haven't put on there, but those are just little fiddler things and a little $5 item. So I didn't add those in, but these are, that's the bulk of what I carry is on my website as well. Um, you can get it to it by clicking the link in the comments, or you can also go to on my Facebook page, just hit shop now, and that'll bring you directly to the shop, or you can go to my website, Handmade by Tara, Dot com and then you can click on the, the was it shop and then you'll see the big logo and click on that and that'll bring you to the shop but let me show you a couple of things that I have in the shop this is one of my own but it's silk scarf they're $48 shipped to your house um, there's several different varieties so you just scroll down through the varieties they're called water marbled scarves I float paint on water and lay the scarf on the water and it picks up the print and they're, they're gorgeous. They're 100% silk and they're so light you can wear them in the summer or the winter. Okay, next thing I have is blanket scarves. The blanket scarves, I've got two different varieties. I've got a square scarf that is 45 by 45 or I prefer the rectangular scarves and they're two feet long, arms two yards long or 16 or 72 inches long and 20 inches wide. Here's a blue and black one that I have. And the way I like to wear them is just like that. And then if you want, you can stuff one end in to just hold it in place a little bit more and stuff it under the coat and it's wonderful. Okay. So that is the blanket scarf, and this one is the blue and black one, but there's several different varieties and there's two different sizes. The square, which is 45 by 45, or the rectangle, which is 72 by 20 inches. And each one is $32, including shipping and sales tax, shipped directly to your house, so you don't even have to worry about leaving the home. The next thing is a, it's a cowl or an infinity scarf. This is made with cotton acrylic yarn. It is a unique design that I've come up with. It's basically a short scarf that I have sewn the ends together. So it's just in a, in a pattern that allowed the fringe to go on both ends and they are reversible. So you can do this one doesn't have as much of a reversibility. It's not that much of a difference. But some of them, they do have a lot more difference. But basically all it is is you pull it over your head. And that's all it is. And it's a beautiful scarf. 
and I've actually had people put cell phones in there. They're like, oh, it does hold a cell phone or a little bit of money or something like that. It would be right here for you. Um, the fringe is, well, this one looks about two and a half, three inches long. Each one is different. None of my products are exactly the same. Everything, measurements and everything vary depending on the product and how much yarn I have. But these are $53, including shipping and sales tax. Again, that's the cowl or the infinity scarf. I have them both listed that way, or list, listed both ways. Okay, next one is another woven scarf. I wove it on this loom here, most likely during a show. I love the colors of this. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at the, the variations of the colors and how they transition from one to the other. And I don't need to show you how to make a, or how to wear a scarf because everybody has their own way they like to wear them. But this one is number 18. Again, $53 for this. It's on my website. It's acrylic and cotton. And look at those colors, aren't they gorgeous? And if you're stepping on, come on and say hi so I know you're here. And the last item that I'm going to show you is a crocheted shawl. This one is number two on my website. And it's just listed as a shawl. This is a triangular shawl. It is, oh gosh. It's got... <laughs> A huge wingspan. This one is a very large one, but it's still worn as a shawlette. I wear it like this. So you can, this is the way I prefer to wear my shawls. So just around the, around the neck and let the tails hang down. Or if you don't like the tails hanging down, you can tie them. Just so they don't get in the way. Just like that. Or there are several ways you can wear a shawl. You can wear it like I call a granny. So you have the triangle on the back and just over the shoulders. And you can wear it like that. Or you can wear it like that and cross over and put a brooch here or a pin of some sort or a shawl pin. You could wear it over one shoulder and then fly the other shoulder over the other shoulder or both over the one shoulder. Wrap it around and throw both of the one shoulder. And I, because I have no shoulders, I put a pin right here or a shawl pin to hold it. And it's a little asymmetrical look. So those are the ways that I like to wear them, um, but you might find a different way. These are $85. All my shawls are $85. This one is 100% acrylic, and you can wash it by hand. I prefer you wash it by hand, and then lay it out and stretch it while it's wet, and let it dry stretched. That'll keep the integrity of the lace going. So that's a shawl and they're $85 on my website. And my website can be, or my e-commerce store, you can go to handmadebyterra.com and find it there by hitting shop. You can also go to the shop now button on my website or on the Facebook page of me and you can find it there if you hit shop now or you can go to www.myebooth.com dot com forward slash vendors forward slash handmade by Tara. So three different ways or you can click the link in the comments below. <laughs> okay so those are the things that I've got going on as far as products. Um, I've told you I've updated my website. Um, the latest thing I've been working on and was working on it this morning I had a woman ask me if there's a way to make ties on my masks instead of behind the ear. So I'm working on that design now. It's going to be basically the same mask part, but then I'm going to put ribbon through 
and then I'm good, I'm ordering them. I'm waiting for some drawstring toggles, and the drawstring toggle will go in the back of the head, but it'll go wrap around the neck, go through the mask, and then the strings will be in the toggle, and you just pull it tight all, uh, along the top of your head. So I thought that might be a good option for people who have glasses, wear oxygen, um, she has hearing aids, and she hasn't found any mask that she could wear because of the ox or the the hearing aids kept coming out of her ears, and so she doesn't wear her hearing aids in public just because she has to wear a mask in public. So I'm going to try to help her with that. How you doing, June? How are the, how's everything going? Okay, so last we talked, I was working on my scarf and it looks like I am almost done as you can see so today what we're going to do is hopefully finish this off and if there's time at least I can give you a start on how I do my fringing and everything like that so first thing what we're going to do is finish off this scarf I've got to just finish the weaving I don't have much more to go and so this won't take too long to finish this weaving. And I just dropped my shovel. And as you see, I was just, I had just uh, put on a new thread. And so when I add a new thread, I just overlap them for a little bit. I don't know if you can see that. But I've got them a little overlapped. And when I take it off the loom, I'll cut those pieces and they'll be tied in without having to add any knots. And what do you think of my new camera? I started, or I got this the other day. It's a 1080p and it gives you a different view, that's for sure. You can see me because I'm looking at myself on the camera or in the on the screen. And with the, when I was on the phone, all you saw were my arms. So this is more of a wide screen, so it lets you see a little bit more. I don't know if that's good or bad, as long as it doesn't make me look too wide. <laughs> but I think it sounds pretty good, and it's looking pretty good. I'm hoping it's not too pixelated as I move. But the last couple weeks I've been working on, well, the last several weeks I've been working on getting my website up to date because I don't know what's going to happen with show season. I don't know if I'll be able to do shows this year or not because they may not allow us to have shows this summer and fall. Um, Virginia's still at phase one, which means we're barely open. Um, I do get to get a haircut this week. I'm so excited. And, um, but since I was in New York in a hospital, I got tested for antibodies to make sure I don't have, right, whether, to tell me whether or not I did have COVID and I tested negative. So even though I was in a hospital with COVID patients next door, I believe, um, I never, I never caught the, the virus. So they did a good job, I guess, protecting us. And um, and I, I did have a mask on, one of my masks, the whole time. And it wasn't, it wasn't unbearable. I, I find that my masks are not as, you would think they would be really hot, but they're no more hot than a full cotton one, but they conform to the face a little bit more. They pull away from the face a little bit more. So it's not every time you breathe, you're sucking in your air and sucking out your air like you do with the cotton ones. So I have found them to be more comfortable than the cotton. <coughs> Excuse me. That's something, I don't know how people that work in food service or um, like my husband works 
in a company where he's going out to a warehouse and then coming back in. So he's in the hot and cold and hot and cold. And I can't imagine having to wear a mask like that. And he said the cotton was extremely, extremely hot for him. So I told him to give mine a try. So we'll see how that goes next week. Because he was refusing to wear them until he was forced to wear them. Which is fine. It's kind of scary. Some people can't have these masks on because of asthma or COPD or whatever. I did have a wonderful woman. She posted the other day, she had won one of my masks in one of my contests. And I did not realize this, but she has COPD. And she had said it's the only mask that she was able to breathe in with COPD. It's got to feel weird. I think I pulled it loose somehow. Let me tell you about this Friday night. Um, on Friday, I believe my time slot is 7 o'clock. It may change if they need adjustments to the schedule. I told them I was flexible. I can do whatever they needed me to do. But my e-booth is sponsoring a virtual craft show, or virtual craft fair is what they call it. And what it is is... It's vendors from my e-booth are going to be doing lives on their websites or their pages. And then it's going to be simulcast on my e-booth group. And to see all the different vendors, I'll put a link afterwards in the show or in video notes. I'll put a note in there as to how to sign up to be a, a to be in that group so you can actually see the videos all at once um, but basically the vendors all have 20 minute spots and I will just do a snippet of everything that I carry um, that's on my website and so it'll be a couple products from each classification I think there's 24 of them so I'll just do one or two products from each section Probably do the children's hats a couple more of those because there's so many and probably do some extra silk ones um, but just a few products from each listing to give it people an idea of what my products are and then they can go to my shop and shop all of them I just find it easier for them to find me that way and then Saturday I might do I've had a request to do a video of all my scarves again, my silk scarves. So I think I can do another one of those. Saturday was supposed to be the day that my son graduates, but he does, he will not be, well, he's graduating from high school, but he won't be having the ceremony. So unfortunately we won't be able to see him walk across the stage. We're talking about doing it later in the year. But I don't know when is too late. At some at some point, it's too late. So I'm not sure what they're going to do yet. They're talking possibly July. I'll tighten this up. I'm almost there. Can you see? I'm almost. That's the end of the scarf. So I want to get it this bar to here and then I'll be able to start my finishing. So just across. And I've been working on for my business, I've been trying to or my my bookkeeping business. I've been getting back into the swing of things. I was so out of it for, for what, three weeks I was gone. And so I'm trying to get everything caught up in there, get my clients taken care of. They've all been so wonderful and understanding. 
and that's I'm getting back into the swing of things and everything's getting caught, caught up and so it just seems like a lot of things are going on all at once is there anything you would like to see featured in one of these lives please let me know I'm always open for suggestions otherwise it'll be a well, I want to continue doing lives sometimes it'll be me working on things and sometimes it'll be a sale you know, what I'm gonna you know, do show some stuff that is available for purchase and I'm hoping by next weekend I'll have my new design of mask and I can showcase that. I'm kind of excited about that idea. She got me, she suggested this one day this week and the idea of making ties, putting ties on my masks instead of ear, ear loops was intriguing. So I'm like, hmm, how can I do that? And I figured out a way waiting for my toggle so you don't have to tie it with a bow and then that'll be easier to put on because I tried to tie a tie on the back of my head and I couldn't keep it I could get it tight enough because every time I think I got it tight enough I'd let go and it'd be loose again like, oh. so I thought maybe this would be a toggle a drawstring toggle might be the way to go But that would be a good alternative for somebody who has glasses, who has uh, oxygen, hearing aids, that kind of thing. Kind of relaxing to just watch it develop as I go. I like doing the lives in this little room here. This is a room in my basement that used to be a guest room and then when my oldest moved out it became the D&D &D room for my younger son but now because of restrictions he's not having D&D &D here so it's now become my live room. And earlier this week, it was my photo room. I had it set up to do all the photos of all the products. That takes a long time. I never realized how long it takes to take all those pictures. Kudos to everyone who does Etsy shops, my booth, my e-booth shops, any of those. Because, wow, it takes a long time to take all those pictures and edit them and then get them up. I was on a mission. I was going to get it done before my live with my e-booth so that people could actually shop me like they would if they were coming to an actual show. And I do miss my shows. I'm a social person. I really need to talk to people. And there's certain things that it's really hard to sell by just looking at it on, in a picture. Like my, I've got a new moon hat which is, it's just a slouchy hat that has concentric circles. And it is the most adorable hat on. But it's not very pretty when you just look at it. It looks like a tam. 
or a beret. And it just, it's not that pretty when it's just laying there on the table. And so people will say, you know, I don't look good in hats, and I love that challenge. When somebody says, I don't look good in hats, that's when I say, hey, can I take that challenge? And some people let me do that, and other people won't. But those who let me do it, I find a new moon hat that fits their colors. And boy, I would say over 50% of the time, they're like, sold, you're right, I do look good in hats. It's the only hat I wear. It's the hat that I have on my, as my icon for my Facebook icon. It's on my website. It's on my um, e-commerce booth. It's, it's everywhere. And that's the only one that looks good on me. So I do not look good in beanies. I'll put them on for a picture, but that's it. And if you do get a chance, please go over to my website, my e-booth, and take a look. I'd love feedback. Please let me know what you think. I would love to hear what you think. And I have people always asking, you know, they they'll contact me with suggestions. Hey, can you make this? Can you make that? And like I, I had two different requests and they've already been sent out. Um, I had a woman who wanted a, a sweater for her dog. A, she wanted a, it had, it's a cute little sweater and she has a miniature Dotson. And she wanted to do that a uh, purple sweater with lavender scales, like a dragon scales, up, up the back. I thought that was cute, or dinosaur scales, I should say, up the back. And so, found some patterns, looked around, made a combination of a couple of different patterns, made up my own ideas, and I haven't seen it, she, but she hasn't said that it doesn't fit. So I'm hoping it fits her puppy. And if you're watching, Terry, I would love to see a picture. And then I had another woman who asked me if I could, she showed me a picture of this sloth plant hanger. And I found the pattern and I made it for her. I haven't heard from her yet, so I'm assuming no news is good news, so she must like it. Um, and and I, she's one that I've done several custom, she'll send me a picture of something and say, hey, can you do something like this? And so I do get those orders too. But many of my orders are just from my website or the things that I normally do. Um, my Caught in the Act hat is not available on my website right now. But as soon as I'm able to, I will put it back up there. So I can make that available for sale as well. Well, it's available for sale, but it's just by, by request only. Okay, this is going to be our last bit of weaving. difficult to distinguish the different levels okay it's getting tight but 
that's usually what happens at the end. I've told you about my dogs before. Um, I've got Barrett and Baxter. Barrett is my 10 year old lab mix, and Baxter is my six year old lab mix. Barrett, we don't know what he's mixed with. He's, he's about 80, 88 pounds or something. He's a good sized dog. And boy, does he bark. He's a barker. And then we have Baxter, who we thought we were getting a Labrador. And he turned out to be a Labradane. So Baxter is a huge dog. He is the sweetest, most lovable dog. And he's 122 pounds. I know that for sure because I had to take him to the vet on Tuesday. Uh, I noticed when I came back from New York that he was limping. Now, he had been with my son's puppy, five-month-old five golden doodle, over the weekend before we came home, and my son's girlfriend was watching the dogs for us while we were up there for my funeral, for my father's funeral. So, Molly has a lot of energy, and Baxter's a big boy. Well, Baxter, I think, got a little overworked and he has done something with one of his legs and he's limping. So Tuesday I took him to the vet to be seen and first thing they said was, well they, they called it something different but basically it's the ACL possibly which is the tendon that's in his knee. I'm, I'm questioning that. I, you know, of course, I don't want to have to put in surgery because she said he is an old, what's considered an older dog for the breed, which really breaks my heart. Um, and so if he were a year old, she would say definitely surgery, but he is over halfway through his life expectancy now. And so they're not too eager to do um, surgery on a dog that big because recovery would be very difficult. He's a very social dog, and so he would want to be left down in the basement, which is the only ground floor exit. We have a walkout basement, so we would have to keep him in the basement all the time, and he would lose his cookies about that. He could not stand that, because he's so social. Um, but I've noticed also, I'm wondering if he pulled a muscle more than anything, because when I tried to get him into the car, I put my arm under his belly, and he seemed to, well, he yelped when I did that. So I'm thinking maybe he pulled a groin muscle or something instead, which is much better than a knee problem. So he's on painkillers and anti-inflammatories, so I'm hoping that that will get him better versus the surgical route. Because that would be eight weeks of torture for him and us. And a surgeon may not even agree to do anything on a dog his age and his size. We would do whatever we had to because he's our baby, but they may not agree to it.
just do a couple more rows. And then I will call it a day on this weaving and we will do the finishing. and I'm sure you will be happy to have it finished too. But I promised that I would do the whole scarf start to finish live and I have. I have not done anything outside of doing lives. And I sat in this room until I come back to it the next Saturday. So that's in true time. And I'm not quite sure how many sessions of these lives I've done working on this, but I know it's been at least five. I said I was going to do one or two more rows and I'll get a little carried away. That's it. I'm done. Pop this over here. So I put it in the neutral position. Then I pull off one, two, three, four. Supposed to be five. Say five lengths. And cut it off. Then I get my handy dandy toothpick holder with my uh, yarn needles in them. I have a wide, a different variety of needles in here, different sizes for different yarns. Now this was just a toothpick holder I got on Amazon because they're called chibis. The, the type of needle I use has little Let's see if I could show you. It's got little, can you see that? No, that doesn't help. Um, it's got a little crook on the end there. Can you see that? So it makes it easier to pick up the yarns. And a lot of people like these little chibis with the crooked ends. And, but the container that comes, they come in always breaks. And so then you have needles falling everywhere. Okay, so what we're going to do now is the hem stitch. So I go one row up, well two rows up, and two over and put the needle in there. And try not to split the yarn if you can avoid it. And then under those two threads at the end. Wait, that's not right. It's been a while since I've done this. That is not right. That didn't feel right when I did it. I think I did it backwards. I do is I fold it over, fold the yarn over, and so it's double thickness to go through the hole of the needle. But it saves me from having to, usually saves me from having to get all the different ends of the yarn trying to stuck into the one hole. Alright, let me think, how did I do that? do it right. I just didn't catch it right. There we go. That's what it is. Okay, so it's angle. Two over, one, two up. Hold it loose. Go over those, or under those two that I just had gone under before. 
but at the end, take the yarn and wrap it around it so it's catching the, the loop. That's what it was. Okay, I did it right the first time, it just didn't catch it right. Maybe if somebody asks me to, I can do like an overhead viewing of this at some point on a separate video, not a live, but just a separate video on how I finish my, my how I do my hem stitches. Because everybody has their own way. But I find this holds the, the yarn or the edges really tight and comfortable. So I don't have to worry about when I take it off the loom. I don't have to worry about a problem of losing my, my weaving before I do my uh, fringe. And it's already halfway pre pre can't or fringed for me because it's, I'm doing two at a time so my fringe will be two threads at a time. And I'll knot them up as two at a time and so it does it does it nicely for me and holds it tight. See that? I don't know. But if you want me to do an overhead view of how I hem stitch, please let me know. Because I could just do a little sample weaving. I can even do it in a contrast yarn so you can see it even easier. But just like with any fiber arts, everybody has their own way and what works best for them. Just as in knitting or crochet, everybody has their own techniques. There's no right and wrong way, but your way. Just like when somebody does a mistake on a project, on a knitting, knitting or crochet project, some people say, leave it. That's a design feature. It's not an oops. Nobody's perfect. So everything has, well, you can't, there are some artists who actually specifically put a flaw in everything they make to show that nobody is perfect. Me, I have a tendency to go back and try to fix it. finish the hem stitch I'll be taking it off the loom and I'll just show you a couple of fringes I won't make you sit through the whole fringing process but I'll show you a couple of fringes so you can see how they're done and I'll finish these and I'll finish the rest of the fringing off screen and I will have this available for purchase on my website in the next couple days. I'll have to get pictures and descriptions done and everything. 
think will be able to be up on our website soon. Before next week, and I can guarantee that. So just do it two at a time. Harder to see that with the black. It's easy. It's as with all fiber arts, black is the hardest one to work with. Any dark colors are hard to work with. It's always a joke that you know you should charge more for working in dark colors. And sometimes I agree with that. And one more. And the last one is just catching the loop. And then the next thing I do is weave in the end. So I go up to a spot where it's not part of the hem. Let's see. It's not part of the hem. And over, under, over, under, just like I'm weaving with the loom. And I'm overlapping a previous weave. And that's how you weave in ends. Because you never want to do knots. On none of I never do knots on knitting, crochet, nothing. I never use knots. There's other ways to do it. And then let's go back. Just to make sure it's tied in well. And just like with the ones that when I'm doing the loose or when I'm switching yarns, I leave a tail. Now we get to take the tension off of it. Maybe not that one. <laughs> okay. Let's take some tension off of it. And then I cut the that down there and then I can cut the yarn I'll take those threads off later. Take it off right there. And then I just unwind it from the end. And then each one of these, if you remember way back when, when I warped it, each one of these is just a tie. I just did a bow on each end, or on the ends. So that makes it easy so I don't have to cut the yarn at the end. yarn, but I prefer not to, because I want to give myself as much of ability to do fringe as possible. Oh, no. 
is done. Ooh, we're done with the loom. Project. Sometimes you have mistakes and you won't discover them until after you've taken them off. But there is ways to fix that. YouTube helps you. I found different ways on YouTube. Okay, let's take this down. <laughs> okay. Uh, on YouTube you can find how to fix your weaving mistakes. But I've had times where it missed a stitch or something and I'd have double thickness on a on the thread and it just looks weird. And what I do is I weave in new thread and then I will cut the old one out. And you don't even know it's there. It's kind of hard when you have multicolor yarn like this. Now what I'm doing right now is just removing the waste yarn that I put in to hold the spaces to get it set with the initial weaving set. Now it seems to be caught somewhere. Where are you caught? There you are. Oh, caught somewhere else too. Ah, there it is. Sometimes the waste yarn gets caught when you're doing the hem stitch and you have to cut it out. But otherwise, this yarn can be used over and over again. I can't even begin to tell you how many different projects this yarn has been used on. So that's that. that's that. Now we're going to fringe. So this is this is the finished, well almost finished project. Can you see that? Well this will be a nice cozy warm scarf. Let's see. That'll be a nice warm scarf. So to finish the edges I just say, let's see if I can show. I have each, I, when I did the hem stitch, I caught two at it each time. So each one is pretty much ready to be knotted up. So I just do an overhand knot in each one. And pull it as close up to the edge. <laughs> must be somebody's home because I hear a, a tail hitting my wall. <laughs> I think my husband just came home. So basically that's all you're doing. She's just pulling the knot. We've all done overhand knots. He's definitely, we're going to hear the noise of a garage door opening in a moment. Okay. So that's it. I mean, I think we're pretty much, I'm just going to finish knotting these up. And then I will, after I finish knotting, I will lay them on a cutting board and lay the fringe out so it's all smooth. And then I use a rotary cutter and I cut usually about four or five inch long. If I have enough yarn, I do that four or five inches long on the fringe 
and just cut across and it's done. Then I take the scissors and I cut all of these tails off and they kind of just fall back into the fabric. Then I wash it and dry it and it's ready to go. But that's the entire process of making a scarf. Because I get people asking me all the time, how long does it take to make one of these? And I usually tell them, uninterrupted, probably six hours. If I'm lucky. And it's just a plain weave. But I don't always get lucky. And life happens. And usually I'm doing them while I'm at a show. So I'm happy to have the interruptions. But that's going to be the scarf. I'll just finish up the fringe and it'll be available on the website within the week. Didn't that turn out beautiful? So, here we go. Um, thank you for coming in. I appreciate all of you. Keep an eye out. I will be posting pictures of the new masks that I'm creating. I am excited about this new design and I can't wait to get those toggles to give this a try. So, thank you for coming in. I'll see you Friday night. As of right now, it's 7 o'clock. I'll let you know if it's a different time. But as of right now, it's going to be 7 o'clock. I only have 20 minutes, so I have to boom, 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 and keep it moving and let everybody know all about Handmade by Tara. Please tell your friends and family and let everybody know that I'm a good option. If you don't want, if you're looking for an accessory that you don't want to find in a retail shop, come to Handmade by Tara. Thank you. Take care.